All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another Wednesday Let's Play Threat Gen Red vs. Blue. I'm your host, Dr. Gerald Ozier, and over the next hour, we're going to be hopping into the Threat Gen Red vs. Blue cybersecurity gamification platform, which can emulate and simulate both the red side and the blue side of, uh, you know, basically a cybersecurity attack, right? Today, we're going to be offensive. We're going to be red. We're going to be trying to attack a oil and pipeline company, but we're going to be doing it with a very special angle. You may have heard of Lockbit. Lockbit is the most rampant ransomware threat actor group or ransomware variant in 2022 globally. They account for about 44% of all ransomware attacks. So if you're gonna get hit, it's a coin flip whether or not it's Lockbit. So today using uh, TTPs documented by NCC Group, which I will show you before we get into the platform and start playing, we are going to look at and emulate exactly the way Lockbit moves as far as we can within the platform from um, initial access, reconnaissance, lateral movement, persistence, data exfil, ransomware. We're going to run the gauntlet today. And the blue team is going to be piloted by an adversarial active artificial intelligence. So it's not going to be a slam dunk, all right? Uh, it's it's more of like a mid-range jumper here, uh, but we're going to have a good time. I hope you can join us. Let's get into it. You're going to learn what the Lockbit Threat Actor Group is, what their TTPs are, how ransomware can impact an organization, and exactly what it looks like from the Threat Actor's perspective. I hope you can stay with us. Let's go have a good time. All right, so first off, let us jump into Lockbit um, and what it actually looks like, because it's important to understand here, and you'll have to forgive me, I'm trying to trying to get these, uh, these things right here. You don't really need to see me, okay? So Lockbit Ransomware, this is an article published by uh, NCC Group. They do awesome work. Specifically, this blog post was written by Ross Inman, who goes by the Twitter handle RDIX64. You can see it right here. I've reached out to Ross and uh, told him, great work, this is wonderful. Thanks for all you do, Ross. Now, can I make this a little bigger? Oh yeah, look at this. It's called full screen, let's go. All right, so Lockbit, um, this, this report talks all about, here's the entire kill chain. Um, and then it goes into deeper detail. Here's the TTPs that we're going to be borrowing. Now, the cybersecurity simulation platform, Red Red, um, Red versus Blue, isn't going to get into the nitty gritty tactical details of running like this PowerShell command in the actual um, system, but we can emulate the impact of what it looks like to do that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and drop in chat a link to this NCC group. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh. Hey, uh, mods, can we get can we get someone in here? Looks like Looks like the uh, adult bots are already um really into <laughs> really into um what we're doing here. So mods, please help out. All right. So continuing to look at this, we've got the defensive mechanisms, the lateral movement. Now, this this article is really well written, and you can use it for your organization to do TTPs. But I've gone ahead and made a visual graphic that we can use for this now. Give me, grant me some grace with this, okay, guys? I, I really, I really feel cool about this. Let me get rid of the captions, uh, the graphics here, really quickly. So this is the Lockheed Martin Cyber Kill Chain, as you may know it, okay? You can see from left to right, it goes from recon, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, command control, and exfil, right? I have mapped the mechanisms and TTPs that Lockbit Gang is using, so you can visually really appreciate what's going on. So the re 
the recon, yes, Darth Vader cat is here, Nick Barker. So the recon is done with Bloodhound. Now, Bloodhound is done once you're on the company's network. So it's not initial recon from outside looking in. But as you're moving laterally through the organization, you want to use Bloodhound to, to get those uh, Windows credentials and be able to move around. Weaponization, I kind of skip because it's basically uh, picking the right tools for the job. Uh, for your delivery, they actually leverage Cobalt Strike. Um, which is a very advanced, um, it's kind of, it's more than a C2 platform, but it's it's a post-exploitation control framework. It's very, very popular, uh, both with bad guys and good guys. Uh, for exploitation, they use Sock Ghoulish. Now, Sock Ghoulish, I couldn't find much information on, but it's a, it's effectively done for initial compromise and then getting in. And once they get in there, we move down to installation. They immediately turn off Windows Defender and Sophos, uh, they install, um, what was, oh my gosh, what was Darth Vader cat for? Um, oh, PS exec. They use PS exec to install ransomware on the threat actors and, um, and, you know, get ready for the deployment. But before they do that, they use cobalt strike for their C2 command and control. And, um, they use seven zip for bundling up their data and mega drive for publishing it to the network. So as you can see, um, it's a very, very easy to understand, very clear uh, delineation of what this cyber kill chain looks like. Because we talk about the cyber kill chain all the time, but like, what does it look like with tools and how do you operationalize it? So this is effectively what they're doing. So as we go through the game, um, we'll be referring to this uh, graphic uh, periodically, okay? So let me go ahead and pull up the, um, the game itself here. I think I have Streamlabs open. Can we do a... Can we do Streamlabs? Yes. Here, let's do the game really quickly. Want to say what's up to people in chat. Yeah. All right. So let's do that. And let's do this. You have to forgive me. I had to reboot my computer like moments before. <laughs> moments before um, we went we went online. So, of course, of course, is not always the way it goes, people. Uh, so this is ThreatGen Red versus Blue. You can find more out about it at ThreatGen.com. We're actually coincidentally running a 50% uh, off special for Black Friday, except we're calling it Hack Friday. So use coupon code ThreatGen Hack Friday. I'll put it in chat in a minute and uh, you can get 50% off um, ThreatGen uh, product during that time. All right, so let's jump into it here. Get my kill chain all good to go. All right, here we go. Let's let's dive in, okay? So we're going to do single player. We are the red team. We are doing the pipeline company. I like a good pipeline. Actually, you know what? Let's do large oil and gas, right? Lockpit, they go YOLO all the time. We're not we're not futzing around here. So let's do that. Now, here's how the uh, threat gen red versus blue starts off. Right, obviously we are, um, we're given some kind of background of what's going on, but the key takeaway here is it is a game, right? So in order to win the game, we're gonna damage the blue team's ICS, which is not what Lockpick does. We're gonna get the blue team's profit loss meter into the red for five consecutive turns. That sounds like a Lockpick move. Let's let's get into it. So in the platform here, hey Roy Keck, good to see you, Carrie. Love it. B second here. I love you guys. Love it. Ape Lincoln, Nick Carter, Alex Goodwin, man. Large oil and gas. Yeah, so that's what I'm on right now, right? Large oil and gas. Yeah, so let's do that. Okay, so as you can see in the platform, this is our uh, skill tree. Uh, and we have to use, you know, unlock stuff as we go. Now, Lock Lockbit does do recon. They do not go physically on site. So we're not really interested in that. So we're going to do OSINT recon to start building up where our targets are, right? Where our targets are. And we're going to do research. Now, on the research tree, Lockbit is really good at um, lateral movement. You know, they use Bloodhound. We're not going to be able to do that necessarily. So I think with Bloodhound, we can simulate that by doing uh, default creds and weak password, essentially, you know, getting those credentials. Obviously, persistence is a huge one for them. So we're going to go ahead and do persistence as well. Let's kick off the persistence and let's kick off default creds enabled. All right, so we're going to pass the turn. I did print out uh, some lockbit stuff. So 
Act the Friday. That's right. Hey, Clinpo Dungeon. Good to see you in chat. All right. Let me go ahead and pass the turn really quick and grab those printouts. All right. So we've gone ahead and passed... Uh, the turn has passed, right? So the blue team is beginning their operation. We're all about the the, the Benjamins here. So you know how, how we're rolling. We've got our action log states uh, that we still have four of our uh, three of our resources locked up. One for the recon, uh, and which we'll get back next turn. And then persistence is four full turns. So it's going to take a hot minute here uh, for us to do that. But we're going to continue grinding because we've done OSINT. We can now, why can't I do a host scan? Hmm. Interesting. Devs, maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm missing something here, uh, being a new guy, but I, I'm kind of, kind of surprised here. So we're going to go ahead and continue, uh, doing skill tree, working on our local passwords. So initial access, I'll tell you right now, according to the NCC group, initial access into the network is gained via download of a malware-laced zip file containing Sock Ghoulish. Once executed, the download of Cobalt Strike Beacon is initiated. So we're going to go social engineering. Do electronic SE or... Uh, hold on one second. Yeah, OSINT. Right, I did OSINT. My OSINT is completed. And uh, I'm not really able to do a host scan, which is kind of confusing. Now, listen, I think uh, researching electronic SE is what I want to do. But you can see here, uh, the platform will actually spell out what this research does. So this is going to increase our skill level at spear phishing and social media campaigns. So that's really what we're going to do because the initial access is done through Sock Ghoulish, right? which you can see in the cyber kill chain is under the exploitation mechanism. Oh, d oh yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. It takes two turns. Got a lot going on over here. A lot going on. All right, so let's pass the turn. We've completed our OSINT. Good job, everybody. Now, I just want to remind everybody, this is the cyber kill chain, right? Obviously, we've got Darth Vader cat up in here. Um, let me Let me do this this way. Yeah. We've got Darth Vader cat up in here, but the sock ghoulish right here, the middle one under exploitation, this guy right here, this is what's going to get us our initial foothold, but the email is how we are going to deliver it. So that's what we're doing here. All right, so let's go ahead and do a host scan since that's all we can do. We've got our action queued up. We only had one resource. We're still working on this electronic SE and research persistence. We're going to bump up the electronic SE quite a bit because once we start popping boxes, we're going to want to, uh, you know, move laterally, use Bloodhound, if you will, start sniffing around. We've completed our electronic SE. Very good. Roy Keck. Thank you, Darth Vader Cat. Darth Vader Cat in this instance represents PS exec. Um, PS exec pushing ransomware all over the place. I was unable to find a good um, PS exec logo or anything like that. So we have done a scan from the internet. We're going to just continue iterating over our recon. Unless there's something I can do that will help with um, evade network detection. So we're basically operating from outside. Uh, avoid detection by IDS sensor. So we're not ready for that. We need to get into the into the place first. We do want to recruit hackers, but we're going to wait until we pop a few boxes before we do that. So let's go. We'll just start scanning a little bit. I'm going to do a spear push, Alex Goodwin, hoping that works. Actually, you know what? According to the NCC group report, it says initial access is gained via download of malware lay zip file containing sock goalish. I, I mean, I feel like Lockbit ransomware, they are ransomware as a service group. So it is kind of like um, YOLO, like, 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 you know, fish all the things. So maybe we will do a campaign. Okay. 
Let's do an attack campaign. So email phishing costs four units. Deceives targets with malicious email. Masquerading as legitimate email. I mean, that really is what it is. We can't do it because we don't have four resources right now. So let's do a, a spear phishing campaign. See if we get a hit. And uh, we'll do another email campaign afterwards. Okay. What's covert attack here? So covert attack is preparing. It makes it difficult for the blue team to detect an attack has compromised the asset. Play this action before you attack. All right. So so we're not really attacking. Like uh, email campaigns, electronic SE is not necessarily an attack per se. So we'll go ahead and pass the turn. Good to see you, Adam V. Good to see you, RV. Welcome to the party. We are playing Threat Gen Red versus Blue. You can go to ThreatGen.com for more information. Looks like we lost one of our assets. Our action log, we're looking at it. We've got a spear fishing attack queued up, and we've got two assets available. Uh, so while we're doing that, we're going to just continue to kind of enumerate over the assets that we have discovered. We are ex we're executing Lockbit Ransomware Threat Actor Group. I'm going to put the NCC group report in chat right now in case you want to read that report. All right. I just dropped a link in chat. This goes to the NCC group. Hey, Simon, good to see you over there at infosec.live. All right. We've completed our enumeration. We found Carl's machine. Carl! All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's keep rolling. Guys, luck be a lady tonight. Let's get the spear fishing attack executing. We'll do our port scans and hope for a hit next turn, y'all. Thanks, Emilio. Garcia, good to see you. All right. Spear fishing attack successful. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Looks like we nailed uh, an endpoint. All right. So now, listen. According to Lockbit ransomware threat actor techniques, the first thing is initial access. Okay. Look at this really quickly. The first thing is initial access. We've just did that by delivering a malware laced email. Okay. Now we're going to establish persistence. That is the next thing. Now, the way that they do it is through sock goalish, right? And it basically installs, um, this, this, the service basically in the VG auth service, uh, directory. Um, and puts it in the startup folder. So whenever you log on, you're going to uh, see it. So we want to establish persistence. So let's take a look at that really quickly. Um, we want to cover our tracks, okay? That's a big one. That's part of our defense evasion. If you go back to the actual report, Lockbit ransomware threat actors, they disable Windows Defender by terminating the services and launching a batch, a batch file that will turn it off. So that's what we're doing right now. We're going to be covering our tracks. Okay. And um, I guess installing ransomware, because that is part of our TTP here using um, PS exec, AKA Darth Vader cat. Okay. And we're going to do a host scan from here. So look at what we're doing guys. We are doing a host scan, installing ransomware, and covering our tracks. All three of these things map directly to this kill chain, right? The kill chain here is we exploit it with Sock Golish. Darth Vader Cat is installing the ransomware, and PS um, and Windows Defender is being disabled with a batch script. Also, C2 Infrastructure Cobalt Strike is assumed to be installed because we are able to touch this box and do things on it. Um, so we're good to go. Here we go. Again, thanks to NCC group for this great report and their author, Ross Inman, Ross Inman. All right, y'all looks like we successfully covered our tracks. Now you'll know because this is uh, as close to reality as possible, you can cover your tracks, but you know, a, 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 a nosy uh, sock analyst, a sim might detect that you have disabled, um, might detect you've disabled Windows Defender, right? So it's not guaranteed. Now we have a lot of assets here, y'all. 
where uh, like the, obviously network segmentation hasn't happened yet um and because of that there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on here so let's keep on with our all right, so we've got ransomware installed on this guy. We do want to exfil data, right? This is part of this is part of the um, the TTPs, right, guys? Right here, on the far right, Lockbit uses Seven Zip to compress data and then exfils to Mega Drive. Now, I will say, by doing this, we're going to start uh, affecting the PNL, but I'm okay with that because this is what Lockbit does. They get the data as fast as they can, so then they can activate the ransomware, okay? I do want to do an email campaign. I'm going to do... Here, I, I, I kind of want to do another email campaign instead of exfilling data, okay? Let's do that. We're going to do a email attack campaign following Lockbit's um, TTPs. And can we add new hackers? Not yet, but we, we want to soon. All right, can we, I don't want to do a password attack on Carl either. Got one resource here. What are we thinking, y'all? Find vulnerabilities. We don't really have a lot of things discovered. How about evade network detection? Let's do that. That's one, that's one, one turn. And they likely don't have, All right, they likely don't have network um, IDSs in place yet because that's more of an advanced thing, but it's it's what we can do for one, one resource. I'm on turn nine, Alex. All right. So I'm thinking we eat, because I don't want to really waste just scanning. Um, you know what I mean? Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do a scan here because this is likely the firewall. Um, and I'm going to extend that because we've got a compromised box, because they run Bloodhound, we might be able to do a password attack on that firewall, right? Yeah, all right. So there's the gateway firewall as, as expected. Um, our email campaign is going to kick off in two turns. Yeah, there's a lot of nodes here. Um, I guess I can scan one here. What's, what's Jones's machine? Um, well, see, I don't want to install disruptive malware. What, what does this mean? Install malicious malware on a compromised asset. Doing so increases the company's P and L meter. The task can be difficult if the asset has antivirus installed. So, I mean, they do not really install disruptive malware per se, I think once the machine is compromised and you've activated ransomware, it's a good idea to do that. But it's not really my goal at this time. Hmm. Hmm. All right, let's let's just scan an asset just to use the, the turn here. Network segmentation is probably going to land soon. Maybe pull the campaign back to SOC Media and get Data Excel going before you get cut off. Eh, possibly. First attack campaign. Good. So we haven't actually hit anything. And this is going to use up all four resources. This is really a crap utilization of my uh, my resources, honestly. I'm probably going to give this campaign two more turns and then um, end it. I, I, I should have waited until I had more resources. But, you know, Lockbit Ransomware Threat Actor, it's a, it's a ransomware as a service mechanism, which means they enable people who aren't sophisticated enough to do these things on their own um to uh execute so i'm doing this attack campaign i'm going to give it one more turn um and then end the turn and i mean and then um go a different way all right access is cut off we had a pivot available access was cut off okay so Okay, so check it out. We we compromised Picard here, which is great, through the email campaign. So I'll let it roll one more turn. But we lost access to um, Keith Jones or whoever it was. But the ransomware is still there. So when we find it later, we can definitely get in there 
and get going. All right, so let's do a port scan. Oh, wait, actually, I've got a... Here, I'm gonna end this campaign. I'm gonna end the campaign because I need to cover my tracks and I don't even have enough assets to do that. Um, you know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and host scan from here. Yeah. All right, so let's see this. Uh, I'm gonna end the campaign so I can get my assets back. I'm going to do uh, recruit hackers because I feel good um, about what I've done. You know, I've, I've popped some boxes. I've um, compromised some assets. Look at this. This is pretty good. Let's get some more hacker resources, okay? Let's cover our tracks on Picard, right? And we want to install ransomware, but we're going to wait on that. All right, passing the turn. Guys, if you're just joining us, there's about 50 of you in here. Hello. This is Threat Gen Red versus Blue. My name is Gerald Ozier. I am operating as the Lockbit ransomware threat actor. I signed up for Lockbit. I'm executing it, following the playbook, uh, following the TTPs from the NCC group, Ross Inman. Um, Ross Inman, who is a NCC group cyber incident response team member out of the UK. He wrote an excellent blog post outlining the TTPs, and I am following them. We've gone ahead and covered our tracks, which is fantastic. We're feeling, we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. Uh, we, we're going to try to get some more hackers on our squad. But while we're doing that, let's uh, install ransomware because that's the name of the game. And let's keep scanning devices. It's all about that cashish. Where's where's the money one? Do I have a money one? Hmm. Straight cash, homie. Yes. Straight cash, homie, indeed. All right. Can you actually, hold on. Nick Barker. Nick Barker uh, or whomever, can you hear the uh, sound effects that I'm playing? I want to know. Uh, please let me know in chat. Now, this guy is... The ransomware was successfully deployed, so that's fantastic. Um, um, oh, good. Okay, all right. I wasn't sure if you could hear the sound effects. Okay, so we've got the ransomware. That's good. Uh, we're going to continue uh, progressing again. Again, guys, um, the, the, this is the cyber kill chain with funny graphics on it to show you what Lockbit does. But they're using Bloodhound to move laterally and, and look around. They're installing uh, ransomware with PS exec. Uh, they're using uh, data exfil, 7-zip uh, compressing it and Mega Drive to host it. And then um, Cobalt Strike for keeping track of everything. Cobalt Strike, uh, definitely a good platform. All right, so let's keep doing this. Hopefully, we get some hacker resources next turn. That's the name of the game. Let's let's go. Please, please, please. No love, no joy. Failed. Dang. I guess we got to build up our street cred a little bit higher. So let's keep let's keep going here. Um, let's do service enumeration. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. So I'm trying to get some assets here. Let's do this. Let's end the turn. Yeah. Oh, LOL, carry. It is a rough one uh, in more ways than one. All right. All right. So we've got some good stuff here. We're, we're not trying to blow up anything while we're out here. So trying to not waste resources on things like that. Let's do one more social engineering or spear phishing attack. Shall we? And then we'll start we'll start moving laterally. Oh, this is perfect. So the spear fishing attack is gonna take we'll try recruiting hackers again. I feel like we need to We I, I know guys, what do you I think I need to um What do I need to do here? I really want to do some uh some some growth here. You know, but it's hard. Here, let's let's following the TTPs. Okay, so we've got initial access through um, email, which I'm going to do another one. Right, defense evasion, covering the tracks, disabling Microsoft Defender. 
Uh, Bloodhounds executed after initial infection on patient zero host. The output is dumped and then you can move around. So they do have credentials, okay? They do have credentials. Um, which means I can use credentials to attack other assets, okay? So this is a good one. So let me actually... God, I need more hackers. I want to do a uh, attack, default creds attack on some of these firewalls and try to pop in to other environments. Um, let's do a vulnerability scan too. Some public phones. Yeah, Paul Williams, I know. Today, today it's corporate. I got the corporate logo on. Trying to do educational stuff over here. Found public vulnerabilities. Very nice. Uh, let's see. This is good. Rick Malik is up in here. Good to see you. All right. So we're going to see if our spearfish hits next turn. We're going to recruit hackers. So we'll get three resources back next turn, and I'll start trying to do password attacks on the firewalls using the data that we got from Bloodhound, right? All right, everybody. Let's, uh, let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. All right. We successfully compromised an asset. All right, so let's go ahead and cover our tracks and do a host scan from Rick Maliko. Now, he looks like he is a um, a sales guy out in the field, so like that's not going to be a lot of value uh, attacking him, but you know it is what it is. We definitely want to install some ransomware up on this dude. All right, tracks covered. Hopefully, we are doing our job. Ooh, Rick Maliko. You, my friend, happen to be uh, in a really weird spot. So it looks like Rick was um, on site with his laptop in one of the network segments that we haven't seen yet. But you see how Rick has disappeared? That means he went home for the day or turned off his computer. And now we can no longer... Oh, we can see something. Hmm. All right. Well, normally I want to keep scanning, but I'm going to do a password attack on the gateway firewall. Okay, let's do that. All right, here we go. Password attack on the firewall. Let's go. The GUI at the red versus blue is cut off. Let's see. All right, hold on. I'll, I'll get that sorted out in just a minute. Additional hackers recruited. Very nice. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, allow me a moment to clean this up. Um, hmm. Let's do it this way. Do, do, do. Hold on a second. How do I do this? How do I do this? Hold on a second. This is me doing this in real time. But it's going to be worth it because there's part of the screen that you aren't seeing. Doink! How's that? Just like that. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get back to it. Thanks to whoever said that. Um, I don't want to do the PCS firewall because I, if I'm not mistaken, oh, is that get into the data historian? We can do that. Oh, Rick Maliko's back. So our password attack failed on the gateway firewall. We can do a password attack on this. We've got our assets here. Uh, all right, so here we go. Um, let's scan all the things. Can I install ransomware on this guy? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We need to get ransomware on all the things, too, guys. And we got to go find Keith Jones's... Uh, we got to go find Keith Jones's machine. It's in here somewhere. Did, did ransomware install correctly? Yeah, we got ransomware on there. Password attack failed. All right, so we've covered our tracks. This guy's ready to go with ransomware. So let's do that. Let's do that. Let's begin exfilling data because... We're now using 7-Zip. Guys, so the Xfil data part, 7-Zip and Mega Drive, okay? That's what Lockbit does, all right? So these assets are actively working for us now. Look at me, I'm the captain. Okay, so now let's do a password attack on the fire on the PCS firewall. There we go. Did we get it? We did not get it. All right. And I want to say that my password attack skills are pretty, pretty crappy. I do need to start doing some research. 
Here, let's port scan, port scan, port scan, port scan, port scan, port scan, and do some research. What is Carl? Carl's always an easy, an easy uh, mark. Heap overflow, RFI, format string, cross-site scripting. You know what? Let's do, let's do um, fuzzing. It's two turns. So question from Carrie. Jerry, so then I have to be careful when I use Mega Drive then. No, you don't have to be careful. Uh, Mega Drive is fine. It's just that's where threat actors typically stick their stuff. You're not going to co-mingle your data. The threat actors aren't attacking Mega Drive. They're just using it the same way that they could use Dropbox or Google Drive. It's just Mega Drive, if I had to guess, is like less discerning about who uses their products and stuff. Not making it bulletproof, but quasi-bulletproof. We got network dice devices for days over here, guys. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And let's do this. All right, guys. These things are... Were we able to successfully exfil data? Yes and yes. We also want to install disruptive malware now on these devices. As soon as I get some of this uh, research done. Not research, but... So we're going to see a lot more vulnerabilities this next turn because I've done fuzzing on these devices. Fuzzing successful. Good job, everybody. Good job. Whoa. Okay. Okay. This is pretty good. This is pretty good, guys. Um, we've got some serious assets going on up in here. Up in here? All right. So we really want these, um, these assets right here. No question. <sighs> All right, so we have to do fuzzing again, I suppose, in order to maybe find something on this. I'm going to password attack. Oh, I can't see these things because Rick Maliko's gone. Dang. Hmm. All right, we need to start doing some research. Heap overflow, zero day. He, no stack overflow. Um, I really want to get into here heap overflow all right so let's do the heap overflow yeah and did i do weak password learning no should we do another spearfish rick has sawed it off no pivot that's shady rick it really is all right so i mean a spearfish is three additional turns i feel like at this point you know we're in so we really should be trying to like break down doors and stuff like that. Integer overflow, stack overflow, heap overflow. I'm just looking to see if um, there's some like integer overflow, stack overflow, integer. Okay, so I'm seeing some quality um, overflows here. So uh, let's do let's do this one right here. Stack overflow. I feel like I saw that a couple times. All right. Actually, you know what? With three, with three, um, three things left, I really want to do another. I want to do a password attack. Hmm. Um. Hmm. What's pilfer data? Successful social engineering attack. Not really worried about that. Harvest creds. Help with weak password attacks. All right. So let's do that. We can harvest creds. And we can install disruptive malware. Let's go. Oh, Rick's back. Hey, Rick. Hey, Rick. How you doing? Thanks for letting us. <laughs> Thanks for letting us password attack the terminal server, Rick. You're the best. Cool. All right. Guys, if you're new here, I see some people coming in. My name's Jerry Ozier. This is Threat Gen Red versus Blue. I am emulating Lockbit ransomware threat actor on a large pipeline uh, oil, and, oil and gas company uh, up in here. Um, you can see I've already got two assets that I own. Rick Maliko's laptop with ransomware installed. I just have to activate it when I'm ready. We're doing data exfil. Password attack failed. No surprise there. What kind of uh, RFI zero day? And what do we have here? 
LFI. Mm. We got some heap overflow action going on in here. Heap overflow. I'm going to do one more heap overflow. And I really want to own this terminal server. So we'll do an RFI. And we've got three assets. Let me start doing uh, disruptive malware on this guy and harvest creds on this guy. Was I able to successfully harvest creds earlier? No. I failed to harvest creds on Picard. All right, that's fine. File inclusion is easy to exploit. Okay, let me see what I did. Oh, we're researching it, so I'm going to go for it right after this. Thank you, Alex Goodwin. Alex Goodwin and David E. are always the uh, professional services consultant hired to help us. So we're just kind of executing through this. Um, looks like my... Um, my goal to install malware and cr harvest creds did not work on Rick Malico. So certainly not great. Let us, shall we do one more spear fishing guys? Kind of really lean into the, uh... actually let's prepare a covert attack because we're about to, um, we're about to do this, right? Prepare a covert, it makes it difficult for, yeah, okay. So let's prepare a covert attack because we're actually going to be banging on doors uh, here in a minute. Hired by the Dodgy Brothers. Exactly, exactly. RFI is completed. Heap overflow completed. You could see now these devices using the icon legend. Um, this asset has gone, has one or more advanced research vulnerabilities. So David E's machine and the PCS firewall and this field switch are not looking hot right now. They did put a VPN in, which is interesting. Um, let's go ahead and attack the firewall using our heap zero. I mean, a heap overflow attack. Let's go. Uh, wish us luck. Aaron KG, is there a GRC position on the blue team yet at Jerry? Uh, no, in larger organizations, GRC people wear, will wear multiple hats. For example, I've run a team, uh, a very small team that had a lot of matrixed IT people with InfoSec responsibilities. And I was responsible for going into the, you know, um, EDR management platform, clearing out alerts, uh, looking at SIM logs and stuff like that, engaging with the MDR. So, you know, in smaller groups, it's all hands on deck, which is why MDR is so valuable because you can... You can get a team on a on a on a you know discounted budget. Here we go. Please, 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 please. Successful attack. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Sure. I'm the captain now. Yes. We did it, everybody. Congratulations. Looking good. All right. And uh unfortunately our <laughs> our prepare covert attack. Well, yeah, our covert attack worked. And then we attacked successfully. So that's a that's a win. That's a win in my book. Yes, if we were the blue team, red would be the AI. Yes, exactly. Now let's take another look. RFI zero day here. We're going to do a little bit more research on this one. We're scanning with this guy. Uh, we're going to do a network. What, what's this guy got? LFI. The DMZ recorder would be pretty sweet to get uh, malware on. Uh, I mean, ransomware on, excuse me. Um, what can I do? Oh, you know what? Let's do another covert attack. Since we're, we're going all in on this, right? I want to break free. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Ooh, look at all these assets. Lockbit ransomware threat actor. Looks like it's, uh, Christmas is coming early this year. Or Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or whatever, um, holiday occasion you like to celebrate for your denomination whatever it is it's coming early this year look at all this your tax returns are coming early keith jones is back people keith jones is back yes with our ransomware payload fully fully installed thank you keith let's go ahead and um let's go ahead and install disruptive malware on this dude right give him the full the full uh the full treatment. And then we're going to evaluate these assets over here and see what happens. All right, here we go. LFI research completed. Backdoor created. Nice work. Speaking of backdoors, 
I just want to remind everybody, this is uh, the cyber kill chain with the lockbit ransomware TTPs mapped over it. And I did this right before the stream, which is why it looks really funny. Um, we just did covert attack prepared, a backdoor created. Lockbit ransomware leverages Cobalt Strike for their command and control and persistence mechanisms, right? So that's what we're doing here. So when we say um, backdoor created, that's Cobalt Strike, right? That's what we're doing here. Now, if the blue team had half a mind, they would be searching on certain indicators of compromise like orangebronze.com, uh, looking it for uh, service host one DLL inside the program data directory on Rick Maliko's computer, but they're not doing that it seems. And look at all these things on fire, bro. Terminal server coming at you, coming at you. Oh man, we're making moves like snake in the grass. Exactly. I know. I know. Hey. You know, uh, Alex Goodwin talking about how I'm all up in this space and um, not not doing more damage. But, you know, it's how we roll. We got to we got to roll this way. I'm looking for some critical assets up in here. I really want to get this terminal server. Let's see. Let's see. Terminal server. Do we get it? Do we get it? Successfully compromised an asset. We own it. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, install ransomware. Obviously, Lockbit's got to get paid. We're going to do a host scan. We're going to exfil data. And we're going to install disruptive malware. We're going to also scan this Windows computer. I'm going to put the embedded devices down here because they're not really interesting to me. Yes. We're doing it. We're doing it, guys. We're doing it. Control PCS computer, engineering workstation. This is normally the, the, the juice, but I don't even care. All right, so DMZ recorder. Let's do this guy. Were we successful? All right. We successfully installed uh, ransomware on the TMZ server. All right, guys. We've exfilled data from the TMZ server. We... We are killing it. We're killing it. So check it out. Here's what I'm thinking. Lockbit Ransomware Threat Actor Group. They install, they this disable everything. They install their ransomware using PSExec. That's Darth Vader cat right here. And they move all around the organization using Bloodhound, like pulling creds and stuff like that. I own the terminal server, two endpoints, a, a end user workstation. I am fully up in this piece, right? So I'm considering, I'm considering uh, ransomwareing these guys. Uh, my only confusion is, if Rick Maliko disappears, do I lose access to a bunch of this stuff? I'm not entirely sure. I don't think so. Um, but we uh, are doing research right now on LFI, and we want to be able to continue to do that. We're also doing um, what is this? Stack Overflow. What's this guy got? Stack Overflow. Okay, so let's do Stack Overflow as well. And David E. Oh, Ed, let's do another covert attack because we're trying to be low and slow. And I really want to activate the ransomware. Um, right. So they're saying if I, if I ransomware this one, it's high value. I agree. I agree. Um, I, I guess I just thinking I might collect a few more assets and then ransomware the crap out of them a little, you know, like, you know, at, at once, right? Having this terminal server is really valuable though, but I kind of want this DMZ recorder. Um, I could try LFI right now. Oh, man. LF, all right, let's... Uh, it's going to take me two more turns to beef this up, okay? Two more turns. Um okay, so we have two uh two pivots in the in the in the DMZ. So, I'm going to go ahead. We have two more turn uh two turns to make this um an advanced exploit and I really that's what I really want. So, let's do that. All right, here we go. It's a Windows server. That's good. Let's enumerate it. 
And then this DMZ recorder is about to turn red hot. Okay, stack overflow completed, pivot available, successfully compromised an asset. Which one? Oh, oh, that's an old alert. Our covert attack is ready right now. You can see the DMZ recorder is now nuclear. So let's go ahead and pop a hole in that box. And uh, let's, let's put Ashley's laptop over here, David's laptop over here, Carl. We're coming for you guys next. All right. And then let's let's continue enumerating some assets up in here. We have this control PCS, but we don't have any phones on it. We're going to activate ransomware next turn if we get this DMZ recorder, okay? Let's go. Let's go. Hopefully, hopefully we get it. Hopefully we get it. We did not get it, okay? Action failed, but we do have um covert attack so let's try it again Ooh, we have this right here too nice let's do it attack again yeah and then i'll do a vuln discovery on it thank you actually i'm gonna do fuzzing that way i get um you know i can get some more findings on uh this vpn server and a couple other things that um we we've since you know recently uncovered Come on, come on, come on. I did not get it again. That's a real bummer. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to hit it one more time. Not not really good luck here. Ooh. Alright, let's go. Thanks, B sec. Take care. Alright, here we go. If I don't get it this time, I'm gonna ransomware stuff. Oh, we got it. We got it. I came in like a All right, let's go ahead. And we cannot uh, cover our tracks for some... Oh, because it was a covert attack. But we can install ransomware. We can exfil data. And we can do... We can attack something else. <laughs> Look at this. Look at all this. Look at all these goodies. Nom, 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 Okay. Let's go ahead and prepare another covert attack. And let's look at what Windows computer this is. Ooh, the PCS recorder. I didn't get any, I didn't get anything on this guy. Damn. All right, so let's look at this uh, Windows computer and see what we got. I'm not really interested in the switches and stuff like that either. Even though I could take this field switch for joyride. I'm interested in, I'm interested in data guys. I'm all about ransom wearing people. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, we're preparing our COVID attack. We have five assets. Um, I kind of want to wait. Ooh, what's this? Command injection and cross site scripting. Format string error. Hmm. What's Lopez? Okay. Did this work? Oh, we can install active uh, ransomware. Okay, so we're going to do. Here we go, guys. Here we go, guys. We have exfiltrated data to Mega Drive. We seven zipped it up. We exfiltrated data to seven drive. We are now ready to call in the big guns. Lockbit ransomware threat actor group. They move around. They use PS exec Darth Vader cat here to push their lockbit payloads on endpoints, which I've done. We've exfilled data so we can do the double extortion technique. We're going to get paid, guys. We're going to get paid. Let's activate the ransomware. Oh, it feels good. All right. And let's go ahead and continue scanning all of the things. Um, I really do wish I had a... Can we do a data exfil on install disruptive malware? Sure, why not? Look at this. It's a good day in the red household. Oh my goodness. Activate ransomware, activate ransomware, activate ransomware. BSEC, you're missing out, buddy. You're missing out. Oh, Jesus. Whoa, okay. 
look at me, look at me, look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. Jeez, guys, we actually just stomped a mud hole in the blue team's butt. Uh, let's look at us. We definitely ransomwareed all of the things over here. Great cash, homie. So we were going to get paid um, no matter what. This The CISO got fired. It sounds like the board's not going to pay us. We'll probably have to publish the data. But um, guys, let's look at what they were looking at. Uh, DMZ and terminal server done. Their P&L firmly deep in the dark red. Um, we had some of these machines over here. Uh, we had a couple controller PCS. We owned this firewall, which would have been game over. Uh, we had Picard right here, who was deep in the, um, in the uh, PCS network. And of course, Rick Malika, why not? Um, they had very little threat intel. Remember, um, we were operating very silently. We attacked initially with a, um social engineering attack right and here just to re refresh everybody we attacked with a social engineering attack we installed sock goalish we exploited the endpoint right here in the middle then using bloodhound we did recon internally started deploying um cobalt strike everywhere we could as we compromised new hosts using a variety of attacks we removed windows defender we used ps exec to push the lockbit ransomware threat uh malware into the endpoints we exfilled data by wrapping it up with 7-zip and pushing it to mega drive and then we detonated our malware ransomware payload lockbit guys this company this company's front page news tomorrow CISO fired large oil and pipeline uh, oil and gas company another victim of Lockbit ransomware. Let's just look at the metrics here. The, the threat gen platform does allow you to see kind of a post game, post mortem. You can use this uh, to you know better inform yourself or if you're doing team exercises to better inform everybody else. Looking at it right now, you can see that they only detected one sixth of our attacks, which is perfect because we were hiding. Um, the average detection time was 14 turns, which means by the time they found us, we were already moved on to the next endpoint or two more after that. Uh, they did have a ton of money, 189,000, five budget requests. Guys, <laughs> my thoughts on this is no wonder the CISO got fired. Asking for a lot of money and then um, these are your results? No, 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 no. We don't, we don't pay, we don't pay for uh, horrible results, okay? I just want to remind everybody, um, that we have been playing threat gen red versus blue this has been a really really good experience let me go ahead and change the camera angle so i can talk to you guys for just a minute all right i hope you got value out of the stream today that was a lot of fun really really uh genuinely appreciate you being with me today i want to remind everybody that in addition to delivering educational value and talking lockbit and playing games which is a whole lot of fun you too can play the threat gen uh you know, threat gen platform. There's a variety of different ways and mechanisms that you can do. I'm going to go ahead and put this up here right now um, because a lot of people, this is something that we just launched today. So it's brand new. Okay. So right now, you might have heard of Black Friday. This is Hack Friday. So threat gen is running a promotion through Friday the 25th, so just about eight day, eight or nine days here. For the next eight or nine days only, we are running a 50% off uh, promotion, right? So, you know, we wanted to get in on all the Black Friday action. We talked about it. We think it's a good idea. We love the product. We want more people to experience it. Whether you're using it for tabletop exercises, which is an entire different module altogether that can make tabletop exercises super easy to deploy or you're teaching yourself how to play on the red or the blue, or you're just super into cybersecurity like me and you just love playing this game, testing your skills, testing different frameworks, testing different methodologies. There's a ton of different applications. And again, for the next nine days, it will be on um, discount, 50% discount, which is really insane. But, you know, Clint's the boss. Clint decides what's going on. So that's going to do it for the stream. I, I'll, I'll look at chat really quick right now just to see uh, what everybody has to say. Uh, let me let me edit this really quickly too. 
Um, all right, guys. So I'm gonna look at chat really quick. What were your thoughts about the game? Do you do you did you do you know more about Lockbit now? Do you have any thought? Oh yeah, actually that's a great point. Let me. Actually, here we go. Talking about the tabletop exercises. I should have done this earlier. I forgot. Check it out really quick. This is what tabletop exercises should be. Now, like this very second, if you had a massive cybersecurity incident, how well could you respond? And if you haven't practiced, it's going to be a hot mess. Luckily, tabletop incident response exercises identify gaps in your processes, clarify who is responsible for what activities, and what the priority is for action. Tabletop exercises are great in theory, but in practice don't always achieve their goals. They take months to prepare are communicated with static scenarios and PowerPoint slides, and most participants, including management, tune out the process because it's boring. Let's fix that. I'm excited to share that tabletop exercises don't have to be dreadful. The ThreatGen Red vs. Blue platform significantly reduces the time required to plan and host a tabletop exercise, removes the burden of requiring facilitation from senior practitioners, and delivers compelling and entertaining scenarios that will engage your participants throughout. The platform also features active adaptive adversary AI that can be tuned to emulate specific threat actors and focus on their TTPs. The dynamic user interface adapts to the current exercise environment, visually communicating and allowing facilitators to focus on stakeholder engagement instead of managing the scenario. Just like you don't get healthy and fit by working out once a year, the speed and frequency you can perform threat gen red versus blue tabletop exercises allows you to execute as frequently as you'd like. Setup of the platform takes literally minutes. There is so much more ThreatGen Red vs. Blue can do to increase the effectiveness of your cybersecurity program. Go to ThreatGen.com or follow the link below to find out how you can get started having killer tabletop exercises today. All right, so that is our new tabletop exercise um, promotion. Um, guys, we have put a lot of work into the tabletop uh, exercise. I know that tabletops are more designed for businesses than but uh, over individuals. But if you are a cybersecurity practitioner and you have done tabletop exercises, you know how unbelievably challenging they can be to get engagement, to get senior leadership to show up, to not have IT just say we'd restore from backups, right? You usually need someone senior to kind of run the, the simulation. The ThreatGen platform can do all of that for you. It's actually a super sick use case and uh, one that I absolutely love. So that's also 50% off. Uh, but again, that's slightly different. That's more for organizations and businesses. But if you're looking to take your tabletop exercise to the next level, this will absolutely guarantee take it to the next level. All right. So looking at chat really quick, Ben Team replay for this week on Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate you being there. Hey, Nick Barker, it is straight fire. Carrie uh, asks, where do you go to buy threat, threat gen red versus blue? So Carrie, look at the uh, URL on the screen to the far right on the bottom, threatgen.com. If you sign up there and use the code threatgenhackfriday, you will get 50% off at checkout. Joe Senor asks, have we used this for CISSP credits? So we can. I have never used it for CISSP credits because I have credits coming out my ears. But um, we talked internally last week, actually, and Clint, uh, the CEO of the company, uh, did his evaluation and, and uh, feels confident and comfortable that it does, in fact, qualify as CPE credits. So go ahead, get the game. You know, it's 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 a game. It's fun. It's educational, but it's fun. And you can, you know, get CPEs also, which I think is pretty awesome. What other questions do people have around the threat gen uh, uh, cybersecurity simulation platform? Next week, we have another stream on Wednesday. I think I might be doing a tabletop exercise. You guys let me know in chat what kind of streams you'd like to see. Um, I'm always trying to mix it up and keep it fun. We've had Members of the community like Boston Rob and uh, Alex Goodwin come on stream. We've had uh, Eric Taylor co-host and co-stream. Simon Linstead's played against us. So we've done heads up play. I've just been thrashing uh, the AI here. Uh, but we uh, we are actually uh, able to do a whole bunch of different stuff. All right. 
Well, that's just about an hour here on the stream. I do appreciate everybody taking the time to be with us to enjoy um, the Threat Gen Red versus Blue Lockbit emulation uh, educational tutorial. Again, I just want to give a shout out and, and uh, appreciation to NCC Group and Ross Inman from their team who wrote this fantastic blog post that was the inspiration for doing this stream, laying out all the TTPs right here and allowing me to make this silly yet fun and actually accurate cyber kill chain mapped to the tools and technology that they are using, those lockbit ransomware threat actors. Are there tutorials like a walkthrough style video? Yes, there is, Emilio. I will get that to you. I would also very much like to play a tutorial walkthrough video live on stream. Let me know if you guys are interested in that um, or if you would prefer just a quick like two minute thing where the, 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 where the game itself like pops up and says, you'd click here, you'd click here. Uh, maybe that's what we'll do. You know what? Maybe I'll even do a stream, kind of a um, a renegade pop-up kitchen type stream later on in the week for Threat Gen Red versus Blue, where I just play a very simple uh, explanation tutorial video so people can actually, um, you know, make the game a little bit more approachable to everybody. There is an official tutorial in production. Yes, but in the interim, I, I would be willing to do a quick little... Um, pop-up kitchen tutorial. Absolutely. All right, guys. I really appreciate um, all of you being here today. Thanks for taking time. I hope you can join us next Wednesday. Uh, if you haven't already, hit like. And if you're interested in this pop-up video uh, live stream that I'm thinking about doing later on in the week, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Stay uh, connected on LinkedIn's ThreatGen's account uh, because we'll be posting it there. So if you're interested in knowing when we're going to do it, uh, those are the ways to be proactively notified instead of having to you know, hit F5 a million times and check to see if we've posted anything. You hit the bell for notifications. You'll be made aware. We only go live when we're doing things with the game. We're not just like doing crazy stuff over here. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much, Jeff Watala. Thanks, Steve G. Clint Bow Dungeon, appreciate you being here. Amelia Garcia with the great questions. Dennis, you are welcome, my friend. I definitely appreciate it. Hey, Raymond. Uh, thanks for being here. Left Coast Nick Barker. Genuinely appreciate it. You guys, Alfredo, have a good one. We'll see you guys um, on the next stream, all right? Take care, everybody.